Oh my god, I'm annoying myself. I cannot speak English. <laughs> everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my wrap up for December 2021. I know I said that I was going to split this up into three parts because I had only read 15 books, but when I said that, I was not aware that I was going to read five more books. So now I've read 20 books for the month of December and this will be four parts. So this is the third part. If you are interested in the other 15 books that I read for this month, then I will leave all of those wrap ups down below once they're uploaded so you guys can check them out. But without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I gave this a five out of five stars. This takes place in 1983 when Nina Riva hosts her annual end of the year party on her cliffside mansion every August. The Riva siblings are a hot commodity as they are the children of famous songwriter Mick Riva. Nina would rather be doing anything than hosting this party after she was publicly left by her tennis playing husband. Hud is hiding a secret that may change his relationship with his older brother Jay who is also hiding a life-changing secret of his own. And the youngest Riva Kit has invited somebody to the party that she did not consult her siblings about first. By midnight, the party is out of control, and by the end of the night, the entire house is up in flames, and it's like the story of that. This is my fourth Taylor Reed Jenkins book, and I can honestly say that I have fallen in love with her writing. She just creates stories and characters that you become so engrossed in. I really liked how this was told over the span of one night, but we also got bits of the past sprinkled in as well. I really like how we got points of views from every sibling in the Riva family. I think that that really helped gain an understanding of all of their personalities. I also really enjoyed how you got chapters from random party guests. I think that was a fun way to tell the story as well. I really like how each sibling felt very unique and had their own personality. They all had their own issues and flaws and they were all still so supportive of one another even if it took them a little bit to get to that point. I am hoping that we get another book that follows these siblings just because I want to know where they ended up because I feel like they have just so much more adventures to go through but I highly doubt that's gonna happen but my little heart can dream. If you haven't read this already which I'm sure you have because it was very popular when it first came out I gave it five out of five stars. I definitely recommend it. It was a lot of fun. Next up I have Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson and I gave this a three out of five stars. When Nala Robertson agrees to attend an open Mike with her cousin Amon, she did not expect to meet the boy of her dreams in the MC Ty Brown. He is a young activist who is spending his summer creating events for the community. By the end of the night, she has molded herself into a vegetarian activist in order to impress him, somebody who is completely different than who she truly is. As they begin to spend more time together and she falls for him even more, Nala doesn't know how to tell Ty the truth and show him the real her and it's like the story of that. I did enjoy the overall underlying message of this about self-love and being who you are. I do think that it's an important message that a lot of teens and young adults should read read and learn growing up. This was a very quick read. I did read it in two sittings, but I do think it was pretty average overall. I found that it became very repetitive and predictable, which definitely took away from my overall enjoyment of the story. I also was not the biggest fan of Nala because literally everything that came out of her mouth was a lie, so it made it very hard to root for her in the beginning. I like that she was realistically flawed, but the lying and the self-centeredness was just a little bit too much for me, so I never truly got into the story, so I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. And then the final three books that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up are all part of the same series, so I'm just going to kind of lump them all together just because it's easier for me. But they are all part of the Madison Avery series. The first book is Once Dead, Twice Shy. The second book is Early to Death, Early to Rise. And the final book is Something Deadly This 
way comes. These are all by Kim Harrison and overall I gave this series a one star. I was not a fan of it. I think I gave the first two a one and this last one 1.5 so overall we're just giving it a one as a whole. So this series follows up Madison Avery who died on the night of her prom night but before she was killed she was able to grab a mysterious amulet from the neck of the dark reaper that was trying to scythe her. Now she is stuck between the living and the dead and the amulet that she has gives her the appearance of a body but the dark reaper who she stole the amulet from will stop at nothing to get it back. So apparently this is like a spin-off series of a short story that the author has in an anthology called Prom Nights from Hell which I didn't read and I had no idea about going into this series. I think it's assumed that going into it you're supposed to have read that short story so you're kind of just thrown into this story and this honestly feels like the third book in a series because you're supposed to have all this information that unless you read that short story you won't have. So I definitely think that that needs to be on the front page or something of this book to say like you need to have read the short story before picking this up or you're gonna be completely lost because for the first couple of chapters I was just so confused trying to figure out what the heck they were talking about. I also think that the pacing of this whole series was just really weird. It honestly felt like we were just going around in a circle waiting for something to happen but nothing ever really did happen except for one bad decision after the other. I also was not the biggest fan of Madison, the main character. She spent so much time just going on and on about how different she was from all the other girls in her grade because she had purple tipped hair and ripped clothing that was colorful and featured a lot of skulls. It just felt like a caricature of a gothic girl but like also special snowflake syndrome. It was just really annoying really quickly. I also just didn't really like the side characters and if you don't like the main character and the side characters you know the whole thing is not going to go well for you, but I just felt like they didn't really have any sustenance. Barnabas, who is the angel who is tasked to like teach her the ways of being a reaper, was just boring. The love interest Josh was boring. And honestly, the best character was a guardian angel in the form of a little ball of light that only Madison could talk to, so take that as you will. I get what the author was trying to do with exploring choice and fate and I think that the idea was really good but the execution was not good. The second book at least got a little bit better. I do think Madison got a little bit less annoying in this one even though she did continue to make bad decision after bad decision while everybody around her told her not to do what she decided to do. In this book we get more of Nikita who is a dark angel. I'm not really 100% sure what she is but she was sassy and witty and probably my favorite character in the entire series so I definitely wish that the whole series was about her rather than Madison. The second book is definitely a lot easier to follow than the first book because you kind of have a grasp of the characters and what happened in Prom Nights from Hell so it definitely made a lot more sense than the first book. But then on to the third book, I do think that this is the best out of the series which if it takes three books for the series to actually get like decent which it wasn't even decent I still only gave this a 1.5 out of 5 stars you're probably like doing something wrong but it was still just a repetition of the first two books like it's the exact same story just helping a different person but I will say that these are very quick reads I did end up reading the entire three books in one day so I mean if you're looking to complete a Goodreads goal real quick these are the books for you but don't go into it thinking that it's gonna be a good time because they, they are not good so the entire series just one out of five stars all right everybody so those are the next five books that I am going to be talking about for December's wrap-up 2021 part three if you are interested in the other 15 books that I read for this month I will leave all of those wrap-ups down below you guys can check them out and let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video Goodbye!